Hello guys, and welcome back to another episode of Rail Chief's Back Shop today. And what I have here on the table is the Commodore Vanderbilt tender, which was made around 1996 with the locomotive that it's supposed to go with. Now, just by looking at the intro video that I showed you just a moment ago, we have no sounds for the Commodore Vanderbilt. And that's because if we look back here where the tether is and the little cable that's supposed to connect to the locomotive, we can see, if I could just get it to focus for a moment. Here we go. So anyway, as you can see, we got four of these little pins, but two of them have broken off, unfortunately. And you need to have all six of these pins intact in order for the sound system to kick in. So thankfully, I did a little bit of research on trains.com and was able to find a replacement part with the exact same cable. Now, this one only has five pins, but Using some tweezers, we can pull one of the other pins out of that cable and place it inside of this one, so that way everything is completed. Because remember, when it comes to these old Lionel um, locomotives, these pins are very fragile. And if you don't have something covering up the cable here, then these pins will bend and they'll ultimately, ultimately break off, I guarantee that. So what we need to do for this tutorial is to remove the shell for the Commodore Vanderbilt tender so that way we can gain access to the inside where the electronics are. And thankfully, there are about like six screws underneath that will allow us to gain access to the inside of the electronics. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get on with the show. So sit back and relax and I hope you guys will enjoy. So the first thing, of course, that we have to do is to remove the shell from the tender here. And to do this, like I mentioned, there are six to eight little screws on the bottom of the chassis here that will allow us to do that. So let's go ahead and remove the screws here before we can do anything else on this tender here. All right, so the top part is done, so let's go ahead and move on to the bottom here. There we go. All right, and now the shell should be able to slip off just like that. So let's go ahead and unplug this real quick and we'll put it to the side. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and remove the battery here as well because we don't want this to get corroded while we're working on the tender here. All right, so now I wanna pause the video for a moment to talk about some of the stuff that we have inside the tender here. First off, we have the little volume control on the top with the on and off switch for the sound system. We have the actual sound board. We have the speaker. And then finally, we have the insulator on the inside of the chassis here. Because the tender is made of die cast metal, we don't want to have a short causing the circuit breaker to go on while we're running the train. So you really need to have this insulator on the inside of the tender in order for the electricity and the power to run freely without having any problems. So what we need to do here is we need to take out the old plug here. And if we take a look on this side, we have a bunch of different colored wires for the actual tether itself. We have one that's orange, we got another that's black, we have one that's blue, red, and then finally a brown wire. 
And here we have the reproduction part that I ordered off of trains.com. And this has, believe it or not, the exact same colors that we're looking for and the same connector cables. As you can see, we got the three white plugs. We also have the little silver clip, screw clip over there, whatever you want to call it. And we have the plug with the five um, prongs in it. So let's go ahead and work on the tender. We'll take everything out. And then once we have the new tether put into place, we'll put everything back together. All right, now that we have some of the components all taken apart here, let's go ahead and clip off the little wire tie here that's holding everything together. And while doing this, make sure to kind of make inspect and make sure that there's no excess wire inside of the scissors while we're getting ready to cut the wire tie off. So once again, just make sure to inspect everything before cutting the wire tie completely off of here. There we go, let's just take care of that. And don't worry about this wire tie here, we're gonna go get another one so that way we can combine everything all back together. Now, last but not least, we have the wiring that we need to work on. So let's go ahead and jump on over to the next part of this video and I'll try to, to explain this as best I can.